We should talk about this, this big zero day. Uh, you, you saw Steve Gibson talking about the Johns Hopkins research on messages and discovering that maybe there were some back end, uh, back back door holes to messages. If, for instance, you a message didn't get delivered or was stored on iCloud, the good news is Apple's fixing those retroactively. Bigger problem, though, with this iOS, these iOS flaws. Uh, an Israeli uh, security company uh, apparently. So, do you know the story, Jason? Can you fill me in instead of me just telling the whole story, or shall I, shall I walk us? So there was it? a dissident in the United Arab Emirates who got a uh, a text message from somebody. Ahmed and, Mansour he got two. Yeah, and and they seemed suspicious. And he'd been attacked before. Yeah, and so the UAE and government. What he ended up doing was taking them to a security expert who analyzed them and discovered that this was actually a zero day. It was a vector not previously known that would actually allow uh, code execution of root access on the iPhone. That's bad. That's really bad. Complete, complete ownership. Yeah. and there's You turned your iPhone on the ultimate spy device, exactly. microphone, camera, GPS. They can jailbreak up. Everything you can do. It's basically a jailbreak. And they yeah. can put whatever they want on remotely. Um, so Lookout's vice president of security research. Remember, security companies like Lookout, which sells software to protect you, may sometimes overstate these. Says this is the most sophisticated bad actor we've ever seen targeting mobile phones in the wild. The malware came from an Israeli company called NSO Group. It's owned by a U.S. private equity firm, Francisco Partners. And apparently, this NSO Group will sell these exploits. Instead of telling Apple which would be the right thing to do, uh, so Apple could patch it before it got in the wild. They hold on to these, and this is unfortunately a widespread trend among security companies, mm -hmm. and sell them to the highest bidder. Now, NSO Group says, we'll only sell to legal entities. But the problem is a legal entity in the United Arab Emirates, the government, may do things that we don't <laughs> particularly are thrilled about, including target dissidents. Well, and, and remember the Apple FBI uh, case right. was, the rumor there was that what the FBI ended up doing was paying um, an Israeli security firm. I'm not sure if it's the same one or a different one, but that was the rumor to to get a, an unlock for that iPhone. So this is, the idea here is that they're doing security research and rather than getting a bounty from the vendor, they wait for a really well-heeled client to yeah, come to them juicy and, prize. and pay to use that which i mean this is the thing if you're if your job is spying there's no interest in theoretically in uh, in having these bugs fixed of course the argument would be somebody's probably also spying on you and you might want those bugs fixed but uh, they're more interested in having it as a vector for spying on That's who they the need problem, to. That's the problem. It's not just the NSO group. They're bad guys who may discover the same flaw and, mm -hmm. and, and take advantage of it. So by not patching it, they're making us all vulnerable in their, uh, you know, uh, uh, either effort to make money or in the case of U.S. law enforcement in the effort to catch terrorists, but it makes us all less safe. Uh, Apple did just start their own bug bounty program. They did. Offering what a couple hundred thousand dollars depends on on what the what the what the flaw is and it, right. they've got sort of a, a different list but uh, yeah they announced that at Black Hat the video actually just went online I think I saw it this week um, they've got the whole video there which details a bunch of the security stuff that, that was a doing. good talk by the way watch that talk if yeah. you're interested if you're like interested in a deep dive in how Apple does security of course as soon as Apple announces that bounty a private firm announces oh we'll give you twice that much give it to us instead yeah, right. And this is why Apple didn't want to offer a bounty. They didn't want to get in a bidding war with with governments and other security agencies. Three. This, so this to me, this is appalling. There are three zero day flaws in iOS. They've been around for a long time, maybe even years. Um, this is appalling, and I don't blame Apple for this. I blame these security companies who are, are acting, I think, irresponsibly. Right. They're finding it. But they need to tell Apple. And in this case, Apple did learn of these and has patched them, which is why it's absolutely vital to install iOS 9.3.5. You got pushed it this week. Yeah. Um, because now that now it's known. Now it's out out there. Um, we didn't. Did we see any uh, in the wild exploits? Just I, I think Just the one, one that's known I, is the UAE. Ahmed Mansour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he says, I'm a regular target for the authorities here. Every time they get new spyware, they seem to try it out on me. So he would, <laughs> he's, he would, he's an early adopter. Yeah. So he was uh, smart enough not to click that link. He sent it uh, off to uh, Toronto's Citizens Lab, which Citizen Lab is a great uh, researcher working for our, on our behalf. 
No response from the UAE government uh, on this. The NSA group has a brochure uh, that even advertises this stuff. They uh, advertise Pegasus, is, is the malware they uh, used on Mansoor, as a, quote, tool that allows remote and stealth monitoring and full data extraction from remote targets' devices via untraceable commands. Nice. Citizens Lab says, eh, maybe not so untraceable. They were able to track down a network of sites with the malware on it, some of them using web addresses uh, designed to trick you into thinking you're at a legitimate site. Mm -hmm. I went to, I was uh, fished to a site that was tvvitter.com, mm -hmm. which looks a lot on your browser like twitter.com, but it was, you know, I fortunately caught it before I gave them my password. A journalist in Mexico had covered a corruption scandal involving the country's president appears to have been targeted with text messages also in a Citizen Lab report. This is the Washington Post's coverage of this story I'm reading, by the way. Um, Apple did fix it after Citizen Lab and Lookout told them about this. So uh, Mansour's text messages arrived on the 10th and 11th of this month. Apple says we were able to figure out a solution within 10 days and push it out. They pushed it out this week. Get it. 